We're just gonna open this video with a cold start, no intro. I love nukes, you love nukes, everybody loves watching the sun get dropped on some random village or world capital or spaceship. But despite learning to love the bomb, it seems like many people in the comments, the heathens among us across my channel, seem to think that nukes are ineffective or only marginally more powerful than regular explosives in space, or not worth including over some techno garbage that does the same thing. They seem to feel like the majesty of the sun itself is a minor inconvenience and I hate them for it. So today, we're talking about nukes and sci-fi to try to convert some of you to the cult of the bomb. Generic greetings! And welcome to Science Insanity, a channel dedicated to bringing my love of sci-fi in all its often absurd glory to you, the viewer. But before we get into it, the episode proper, if you'd like to support Sci, then consider dropping a like, sub, ring the bell, watch our other stuff, all that good YouTuber schlock, because it really does help and I do appreciate it. And if you want to support the channel more directly, check out our Patreon and consider buying me a coffee. And with that, on to the video. Now before we get into the real meat of the episode, that being all the different ways that nukes and sci-fi can and would wreck everything around them, we need to dive into the glory and stupidity of the bomb and how it works. Davy Crockett's nuclear laser beams, the Cassaba Howitzer, atomic acceleration, and more. Firstly, I will briefly explain the different types of nuclear weapons, because believe it or not, you can make them differently to create different effects. Oh, sure, the primary effect is a colossal boom, but you can specialize them into producing high-energy EM radiation, like gamma or x-rays. You can specialize them into creating a spray of neutrons that act like a giant shotgun where you can try and make them into a shaped charge to funnel as much of that energy in a single direction rather than a generic explosion that wastes quite a bit of that energy. So to start off with, let's talk about what modern nukes are and how they've developed. The classic understanding is of a core of radioactive material surrounded by a massive clump of conventional explosives, the good old fashioned fat man style bomb. When it goes off, the core is forced together, unstable atoms start splitting, and in a runaway fissile reaction, you get a colossal release of energy and a similarly massive boom. But for the most part, no one uses these types of weapons anymore because the world of sun to forehead warfare, fission bombs are kind of like the office workers who buy pickup trucks. Mostly useless, showboating fashion accessories that technically work but everyone knows it's just a glorified eggplant and larger. So if you feel called out by that, good. Now the world moved away from them and towards the thermonuclear bomb. Multiple times the yield for the same rough size vastly more customizable in its effect and construction, and quite literally double the nuke in the same classic casing. A thermonuke operates with a fission bomb as the first stage ignition. After igniting the explosive charges and setting off a normal but significantly smaller nuclear blast, the incredibly dense metallic casing that holds all of this stuff keeps the blast inside and contained for a fraction of a second and funnels it towards a secondary, much larger clump of nuclear material. This material, however, doesn't fizz apart like a soft drink currently going flat. It fuses together under such insane pressure and heat and results in an energy release many, many times greater than that of a fission bomb, quite literally creating a micro star within that casing for a fraction of a second before it vaporizes everything around it and you get the glorious second sun on the surface of the Earth. And while not exactly accurate, I like to think of it as a miniature supernova on the tip of a missile, because it's just so much more poetic that way. These are the weapons you would realistically see in any form of grounded science fiction like Halo or The Expanse, where it's far enough into the future that space travel exists, but we haven't really gotten around to cracking the secrets of the universe to create reality-destroying weapons yet. Those come a few hundred years further into the future. They also have absolutely nothing on the insanity of what people have come up with in real life, by the way. Just a big explosion is some of the most pathetically unimaginative examples of nuclear weapons that we have, and that's just in real life itself. Some have been actually tested, some only drawn up as blueprints, some built and fielded before they decided that this was a really, really stupid idea and then promptly put them into storage like the Ark of the Covenant. And while it won't be a long segment, I want to share a little bit of this stuff with you since in my opinion, sci-fi and sci-fi fans in general do a shit job of exploring the creative uses nukes can get up to. Firstly, the bomb-pumped laser, or the Death Star. 
This was a concept drawn up to intercept incoming ballistic missiles in space during the Reagan eras and Project Star Wars. When a nuke goes off, it generates so much energy, so much light, that for the fraction of a second a lasing crystal survived that energy, it would produce a colossally powerful beam enough so that any missile that it was targeting would instantly have a hole vaporized through it followed by its presumable destruction as it fell apart on re-entry. But we also had stuff like Project Orion, which basically goes, well, nukes generate a whole lot of power and they create a whole lot of force, so let's strap a rocket to the top of one, put a really big metal plate on the bottom of it that can withstand the explosion, and then detonate a nuke on the bottom of it to launch that son of a bitch straight into orbit with no need for all the rocket fuel in the engine. Because what could possibly go wrong? The idea, of course, wasn't quite insane enough to try to put actual people on there, at least I don't think it was, because the acceleration it would have experienced from that kind of thing would have been absolutely insane. You would turn into jello, and instead they were just gonna send solid supplies like dehydrated food or you like bricks of material or whatever it was they were planning on using. But for the most part, just the number of things you can do with the amount of energy a nuke has is absolutely monstrous. However, a common argument from the heathens, the heretics that I've seen pop up quite frequently, is that nukes in space wouldn't be able to do much damage against an armored or really big ship because energy dissipates too quickly in space and there's no air to carry a shockwave. And while this is technically correct, the best kind or worst in this kind case of correct, it fails to take into account that in space, it's incredibly hard to dissipate energy. It wouldn't need to do massive or catastrophic damage or vaporize the big lug to achieve a kill. That's just Hollywood flair, making the big explosion look nice on screen. Think of it like this for, for a better example. Sure, the explosion isn't ripping the ship in half, but every single point defense gun, main cannon, railgun, sensor, window, because a lot of spaceships have those, in line of sight is now non-functional. Barrels warping, electronics fusing, gears and gimbals and motors melting in their housings while the armor superheats on the surface, ablating off huge amounts of it. Radiation is a painfully slow way to lose heat, so any superheated armor paneling or structural members from this detonation aren't going to just cool off into space, radiating all that energy away gently. They're going to transfer the majority of it through conduction into the ship itself first, or I should say primarily. And pray tell, what is inside our intrepid little spacefarer? Oh, an atmosphere? Water and food and fuel and ammunition and living flesh bags? All manner of important electrical and mechanical components that won't react well to superheating? This alone is where in real life most of the actual damage would come from from detonating a normal nuke up in space. In many ways you could think about this in the same way that a tank can be mobility killed for what kind of effect it actually has in combat. Sure, the given target's not technically destroyed and could theoretically be recovered even relatively quickly, but it's no longer combat effective and functionally dead in the water. The crew is either going to have to abandon it or sit there and die with it. Arguably even scarier though is nukes made specifically to be dirty bombs. I'm sure everybody knows the terror of radiation from the various internet horror stories you'll see on Chernobyl or from Kyle Hill. Blessed be sci-fi Jesus, my beloved. But what a lot of people don't know is that there are specific types of nuclear bombs that minimize the actual explosion in favor of producing an ungodly amount of radiation and basically turning all of that energy from a bang into a zap. For those that don't know, neutrons are part of a nuclear reaction responsible for home wrecking, uh, di divorcing, uh, fissioning other nuclei apart and creating that runaway chain reaction that makes the boom. Unfortunately, they don't really care about what exactly they hit, nor do they discriminate on the damage they deal, mostly being the delicate and vulnerable stuff along the lines of electronics, sensors, the crew, because this kind of bomb isn't going to just blow you up. It's optimized to essentially generate a colossal spray of neutrons in every direction, extremely high energy moving at extremely high velocity and thus making them extremely difficult to stop by even very heavy armor plating. For people who may not really know what this actually entails, let me explain it. While stuff like high energy radiation, like gamma rays or x-rays, will obliterate your DNA and you'll basically turn into soup as your body falls apart over the next couple days, or sometimes hours if you really got unlucky, 
neutrons are very different. Whereas high energy breaks the smallest, gentlest, most fundamental parts of your body, and then you die slowly as your mechanisms fail progressively from the ground level, neutrons are like a wrecking ball. They're like little bullets that just do a shitload of damage on a direct path they travel. And in this case, they would smash apart your cells, kill them, destroy cell structures, cause organs to fail. And it's important to note that this, for the most part, is not something you can just wave off and say, well, we're in space and there's lots of radiation anyways, so the ship is already resistant to that. Yeah, I mean, all ships would have to be for people to survive in space long term, but again, this level of shut up and die, you would need something along the lines of an actual nuclear reactor's shield dome to stop these things. Meters of concrete, steel, and a multi-meter thick barrier of some heavy metal like lead. An incredibly bulky thing to stop these high energy particles, and the only part of any given ship that would realistically be capable of stopping this, unless you specifically added a mountain's worth of armor onto them, would be the reactor shielding itself around the actual ship's power plant. Or I mean, I guess you could copy Battlestar Galactica and Halo and just hand wavy them away all of the problems, but I mean, that's boring, so we're gonna pretend that we're not gonna do that. But maybe you don't want to rely on just that, turning the crew to soup. What if you could use a nuke to smash a giant hole through an enemy ship, or funnel that energy into a very small point? Well, here we have the concept for the nuclear-shaped charge. This is, once again, a real-life concept. Though the raw power of a nuclear weapon, the lack of any need for such a weapon, means that they were never really built or tested, just conceptually thought of. Long story short, it's a shaped charge warhead powered by the majesty of the sun itself. What's a shaped charge, you may ask? Essentially, you take an explosive, but instead of having the normal shape of a cone or shell or bullet or whatever you expect, you invert the front of it and put a thicker layer of weaker metal in front of it. When the explosion goes off, it will funnel that energy out into the metal, liquefying it and shaping it into a small jet that can rip through tank armor like it's butter. Hence the name, Shaped Charge. The idea of using a nuke means you could use a vastly, vastly bigger hunk of metal as the damaging element while propelling it with even more energy than any other chemical explosive ever possibly could. A common name for this idea is the Kasaba Howitzer, which is an amazing name that sounds impossibly badass until you realize it just means melon. The Melon Howitzer, a name that shall strike fear into the hearts of our enemies, I guess. But once again, similar to the bomb-pumped laser, this is a way to funnel the energy of a nuke more directly, to somewhat effectively push all of that power directly into an enemy ship, rather than letting it dissipate all over the place. Then, we have the classic nuke, but bigger. I'm not going to talk more much about this, because realistically, you know, the Halo... The Nova Bomb from Halo is pretty much the perfect example. You just take a million different nukes, strap them together in a big circle, and then when you detonate them, you temporarily create a neutron star that has the capability of ripping the surface of a moon clean off and firing it off into the void. So, you know, basically just a nuke, but way, way, way bigger. And I don't give a shit what anyone says. When you've got something powerful enough to create a neutron star and then blow up a moon, it doesn't matter how close you are to that thing. If you're in the same orbital area, you are now dust. Long story short, there are so many ways that the raw, unadulterated energy of an atomic weapon can be used that are just never really touched on in sci-fi other than Big Boom. Are they as devastating in space as an atmosphere? No. But that's because we don't really have any nukes in real life meant to work in space. Every bomb that we've currently made is meant to create an explosive shockwave to destroy cities and stuff. Finally, at the end, this entire video was a long, long-winded way to tell you all of you, the haters and angry people that just want to ruin our fun, the sad little people that have turned their backs on the glory of the surprise second sun, shut up and learn to love the bomb. Because nukes will never not be cool in sci-fi, and will always be portrayed as a one-hit kill because it is goddamn awesome, and you need to just stop complaining with it and go with the flow. Reality be damned, it's cool, and the rule of cool always triumphs. And with that, the video is functionally over. Before we fully end off, however, a huge thanks to all of the channel patrons. Your support is greatly appreciated and goes a long way to helping the channel and me out in day-to-day -day life, with a special thanks to all the members of the $5 tier. David G, Augie, Eleven Bravo Crunchy, Terry Higgins, Pedro Munoz, David G, The Other One, Silencer, Vox Apollyon, Phoenix, BT Legend, Electro Boy Eleven, Logan Maynard, Mickey, David Armand, Cree Dome, Robin Stapp, Fenrir Striker, Tachi Tukane, He's Deb, Pixie, Virtus, Fabric 444, 
345, Anchovy Bob, Mini Crustacean, Charles the Snep, Polly, Eric Jones, Joseph Holiday, Zombie the Zerker, David B, Sweet B, and the new guys, Rastro and Le Butcher. Thank you very much for your support. I hope it'll continue in the future. The video's over. Outros are hard. Goodbye.